Hello, I'm Glenis, and I've got a short story to read you. I hope you're going to enjoy it. It's um, set in the, the city of London. Um, a few years ago, probably 10 years ago, um, but it's about some memories that a, that a man has there. And it's called The Gift. I wrote it um, two or three years ago. The Gift by Glenis Lloyd Williams. Strong. He'd always been strong. A gift, his dad had told him. Wow, he'd been something. His eyes softened at the memory of his fit, firm body. Dark blue mohair suit. Those crisp, clean shirts. And the women. So many adoring women. George Alfred Butler finished his coffee. He looked down at the paper cup and slowly crushed it in his hand with, some might say, unnecessary force. Steady on there, George, my coffee's not that bad. He turned to face the man who had spoken cheerfully from behind the raised counter of Al's Tea Bar, a functional service which had lodged at the corner of Fenchurch Street in the city of London for generations. What? Oh, yeah, he grimaced and threw the remains of the cup into the bin. Just thinking, the old days, you know. The residue of coffee trickled between his thumb and forefinger. He wiped it away, down his already brown corduroy trousers. Good coffee, Al. His dry lips crusted into a smile. Just, just what I needed. You were great, you know. Al continued excitedly, leaning on the beige plastic counter. One of the greatest. My uncle still talks about that fight against John Fitch. Downed him in two rounds. What a knockout. What that feel like, George? Do you still remember that feeling, I bet? Good, Al. Very good. Classic uppercut. He demonstrated with his left. Never lost a fight in three years. They rem reminisced a little longer and George turned to go. He felt better about himself after a chat and, and the recognition it carried, but at the same time, worse. The past and the present. Here, Al held out a covered cup. Take one for your dad, on the house, for old times. Give him my best. Maybe it'll change your luck. In the same spot, is he? Yeah, thanks. Dad would appreciate that. He took the cup in his right hand and, and walked, or, or rather shuffled, along the street towards his dad's pitch on the next corner. He occasionally glanced at his reflection in the variously tinted glass panelled windows of this great financial centre. Still taller than most, he confirmed out loud, straightening his shoulders. He clenched his left fist and gave a couple of short shadow jabs towards the unforgiving mirrors. So much excess money in this part of the city, he thought. All those banks and all those vaults. Well, those bankers would be on their way home soon and maybe they'd be generous today. His dad gulped down the tea and then stood up and walked around a bit, occasionally shaking his foot and rubbing his hands together to get the circulation going. Got about 15 quid, I think. Not a good day. Well, I'm off for a pee. Perhaps you'll have more luck. Put on your lucky face, Georgie. His dad disappeared around the corner, leaving George to his thoughts and in charge of the begging hat. Spare a pound, mate. He repeated each time someone passed by. He ran his fingers through his hair to look a bit tidier and less menacing. Spare a couple of quid for a cup of tea. A shiny two pound coin dropped into the hat. God bless you, miss. My lucky face, he thought. I was lucky once. My gift was free. Of course, I had to work hard in training, but the gift was there. 
and with the gift came respect. I miss that respect. That's the biggest thing I miss. A forgotten memory resurfaced. In a crowded pub, some man had jostled against him and knocked his arm. I think you've spilt my drink, son, George had said very quietly. The man was about to give him some mouthy reply, but as his gaze travelled slowly up to the boxer's face and into his steely blue eyes, the leery grin froze. Recognition. Respect. Oh, lots of apologies and smiles then, weren't there? Nothing was too much trouble slaps on the back. Have another whiskey, mate. Make it a double. And your lady friend, Jin, right away. Honour to meet you, Mr Butler. It was always an honour to meet me. They respected me and what I could do. Never had to buy a drink. I was a celebrity. All those parties in my honour. All those parties. Another pound dropped into that. Thanks, mate. My lucky face. Bloody ugly face now, smashed to a pulp. The gift needs to be nurtured and respected, not what I did. Wasted it. Where are all those friends now? All those people, all those parties in my honour. My friends. Where are you now? Hello, George. A deep, gravelly voice. George looked up. A short, stocky man, about 50, in a smart, black, woolen coat. It is George, is it? George Butler? Yes, sir. The ex-champion pushed himself up the wall until he was standing. He creased up his eyes against the low afternoon sun to focus more clearly. Mr Franklin, is that you? It is, Georgie, it is. What's happened? I hardly recognised you. My wife said it was you. You remember Betty. A petite blonde woman held out her tiny hand towards George. Sorry to see you like this, Georgie. She met his gaze. George certainly remembered Betty. He wondered if her husband had ever found out. He shook her warm gloved hand gently and, and then her husband's hand. He was acutely aware of his own shabby appearance but made sure this latter handshake was firm. Look, Dennis Franklin said, taking out his wallet. I hate to see you like this. Here's my card. Come over to the factory Monday morning and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, here's something to tide you over. Spruce yourself up. Get a good meal. He handed over five 20 pound notes and a business card. We're in a bit of a hurry now. See you Monday. 9am, right? Right. George smiled as he watched him walk off together towards the station. Betty's black paint nails clipping the pavement. Oh, he enjoyed the sensation of a warm light flowing slowly through him. The first time for ages. Hope. My lucky face is back. Who is that? His dad had returned. Look, Dad, a hundred quid and a promise of a job. Dan Franklin, you remember him? Here, you hold the money and pack up. I'll go for a piss and be back in a minute. Our luck's changed, Dad. Our luck's changed. George heard Dad shouting before he saw him. George, get them. They've got the money. Still holding the business card with pride, George took in the scene, his dad on the ground holding his side and two skinny lads running down towards the station. Bring that back or I'll... He tried to run, but his injured leg didn't permit it. Come back, you bastards. I'm sorry, son, it happened so fast. Those druggies. George felt an icy tremor jutted through his body. He rested his shoulder heavily against the cold stone building and slid down onto his knees, blinking several times in bewilderment, hoping that would change this hateful reality. 
All he was aware of was his once great fist thudding onto the darkening London pavement. <laughs>